On this episode of Overland at Home, we're gonna show you guys how to make your very own fully custom DIY Overland storage cabinet. When you're out on the trail, you have tons of gear you gotta keep track of, and it's really nice, especially for easy loadout. And when you wanna just hit the trails on the weekends, having a permanent spot for your gear is super important. So let's dive in, cue the beauty shots. You really just need a few basic tools. Uh, you know, measuring tape, square. We've got some of these really cool stainless steel marine slam latches. We've got some 250 pound slides that lock. I have a pocket hole jig you can get at Home Depot or any other hardware store. We've got some great plywood and a circular saw and a drill. And that's really all you need to do this project. We've got a width of 44 inches. If we go back here where our wheel wells are, we're right at 40, and maybe a quarter. So we're gonna determine for this rig specifically, a 40 inch width. We obviously have an angled seat, so we can't just go straight to the most depth, which puts us at about 37. Take our square, which is gonna be a perfect 90 off of the base, and push it right up to where it touches the seat. So if we take 38 minus five, that puts us right at a 33 inch depth. If you want to keep it super simple, just take your width divided by two and you can place your center board right there. If not, what you can do is this. You can go kind of off width, which is what we're going to do with ours. We're going to go right at about 13 inches in, which leaves us with 27 over here. Overall width of 40 inches. We know we're going 12 inches tall and then a depth of 33 inches. We have slanted seats in the back. So if you're looking at the vehicle from the side, we know that we have our back seats slanted here. Now, if we build the cabinet just completely flat, we're losing a lot of good usable space right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the top board at 30 inches, bottom board at 33, bringing it out to about here. Then we're gonna just make the side panels a little bit longer and then cut an angle in them. Now what that's gonna do is this. If you're looking at it from behind, it's gonna give our cabinet kind of a custom feel, but it's also gonna give us this back compartment that allows us to hide you know, electronics, inverters, solar charge controllers, everything can be hidden right here. So you definitely don't have to do that for your own gear cabinet at home. It's just a little touch we wanna to add onto this one. Once we start cutting and putting it all together, you'll really see what we mean there. So we've lined the straight edge up with our mark here, five inches off the cut line. Take a C-clamp, clamp it down, make sure it doesn't shift as we're tightening it. So we're gonna rip this board down and this will be the final piece for the cabinet. We've already pre-cut some pieces. We're gonna show you how to use a pocket hole and go from there. So we've got all of our pieces cut for the outside shell of the cabinet. We're gonna use an orbital sander. Don't go too heavy on this. We're not trying to get like a fine finished edge. We're just trying to knock off some of the chipping that happened during cutting. Quick note on plywood. You could go with a traditional like four or five ply plywood you find at your hardware store and that would work well for this. What we went with is a three quarter inch thick cabinet grade, furniture grade plywood. So it's just gonna make that much more of a quality product. So we're gonna flush everything up, get the lines pretty close and that's gonna help us determine where we're gonna drill our holes and get everything nice and square. Our back panel butts up to the side panels. So what we need to do is on this back panel right here, do two pocket holes that tap into the side panels. The way this works is these screws are gonna go like this and bite into that side panel. What we have here is what's called a Craig pocket hole jig. And the reason you wanna use this, you don't have to. You can use brad nails, you can go right in from the side with a good drill bit. This just creates a really high-end professional product. You can set the depth and the thickness of your wood. So we have a three quarter inch board. So we've moved this down to three quarter. We've set our drill bit stopper to three quarter. You take this gray stopper, push it right up against the wood. You're gonna wanna clamp this right onto the jig. Make sure it's all square, clamp it hard. Take your drill here. 
go right in. But here we have two pocket holes and no wood glue. You know, if you ran your screws right in here to the side, it'd be a pretty weak joint. No wood glue, just pocket holes, super strong. So that's why it's worth it. It's worth it to do the pocket hole. Let's jump back in there. What's really important is if you're gonna do pocket holes, you actually need to do pocket hole screws. These are certain lengths so they don't poke through the side of the plywood. We've got two long bar clamps, all of our side pieces, some simple wood glue. We're gonna fill it back in with some wood dowels just to go over the top. And you've got the special bit that came with this. We're gonna start by pulling in one of our side panels. We're gonna keep all of our pocket holes on the outside in. Take your wood glue and do just a tiny little bead along each side. Perfect. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna bar clamp it. Okay, making sure it's nice and lined up. Notice it's bowing a little bit on the inside. That's okay. We're gonna make that work here when we start doing our pocket hole. Set that right in. We're gonna have it push out a little bit. Perfect. And we're in with our first screw. This is the skeleton, right? We're gonna put our top across here. We have the center divider board for the drawers. We're thinking that we're gonna go kind of a 60-40 split. So we've got a 40 inch total. I think we're gonna pull this over to right about here, give us like an off width type look. If you had some gear that was really specific, like if you did adventure photography or video work, you could really size this to your accessories. Even if you had a Pelican with foam, you could size it to that. So we went 13 and 13. That's gonna to be to the inside edge of this board. We have these heavy duty 250 pound drawer slides, right? You can't have them run all the way out to the front. So we're gonna come, the width of this square is a one and a half inch. So we're gonna mark one and a half inch. So this allows us to know that the slides will be at a consistent depth. We're also taking a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood. So I'm gonna hold this here and do the best I can and show you. Put a dab of glue. I take my rubber mallet. There we go. So when making drawers, we do have to take into consideration a few different things. Obviously the drawer can't just touch the bottom of the base here. And then for the drawer shell itself, we're, we don't wanna go all the way to the top so you can easily access stuff. So we're gonna come three and a half inches from the top. So right here, that gives us our drawer cavity. So let's do the width between our slides. So we're exactly 13.25. Same thing over here, you know, remember we didn't go perfect 50-50 on it. For your box at home, you definitely can. We're at 22 and 1 8. The height of our box is gonna be right at eight and a quarter. Now we have to determine our depth. So we know that we have a three quarter inch cabinet front. The drawer, or sorry, the drawer front is three quarter inch. With that being three quarter inch, we're gonna make a mark at our depth there. So all of these are gonna be 27 inches deep. You really want the sides to carry all of the structure of that drawer slide. With these slides holding 250 pounds of pop, if you were to put like a flat bottom and then set the sides on top of that, you're losing all the ability to hold that weight. So we're gonna create the side pieces first. The bottom is gonna fit up in between them and then we'll come in at our fronts, mount it up and we're done. We've hidden all the pocket holes in the bottom panel. So the side panels are gonna be completely clear of that. We're working on the bottom. We're gonna add in the back. We're just finishing up these pocket holes. Stay tuned. Click.
So we've got the drawer front placed. You can see here we did pocket holes here, pocket holes here. This thing is super solid. We're gonna kind of show you fitment. So we wanted this to be one eighth off the bottom. We put a little strip there just to kind of mock it up, set it right in. Pretty perfect fitment. We just wrapped construction on the Overland at Home custom gear cabinet. Turned out pretty great. We've got the drawer fronts fit. We're just gonna go back over with a little orbital, orbital sander. Take these little dowel rods off, as you can see here. We've got those. We're gonna make it all flush, round out the corners a bit. Couldn't help ourselves. We're just doing a little last minute test fit to say, make sure we're liking everything. So they clear this perfect. We're gonna come all the way out to there. This one is my favorite. I mean, look at this. We've got almost two foot of freaking cargo. You could do a drone in here, camp stove, all types of things. We'll see you in the morning. It's incredible what Rhino Line can do. It, it completely covers all the joints, makes it look really high end, and not to mention completely waterproof on the top, extremely durable. We just got back into the Overland at Home garage. We finished the Rhino Lining process. We went ahead and mounted our high grade two inch diameter marine latches. The drawers work perfectly. So we found these eye bolt tensioners. You can find this at Home Depot, any local tool store. We've got some of these hooks that are spring loaded. We're gonna set these on the side and then latch these into the existing D-rings in the back of the rig. So let's go get it mounted and we'll show you the final result. Wanted to pull the seats up in the back of Land Rover and show you guys just how that notch turned out that we mentioned earlier. You can see the angle here, gives us plenty of room for accessories, an inverter, a fuse box, things like that. Really happy with how this turned out, guys. The Overland DIY storage cabinet is complete. That's a wrap. It's Rhino lined. It's super durable. We got it filled up with gear, recovery gear, all kinds of stuff. To celebrate the launch of Overland at home, we are doing an exclusive giveaway. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. We're going to be drawing winners over the next few days and weeks. And you want to know what we're going to be giving away? Do you want to know? We'll show you. It's the Nitto Overland at Home cast iron pan. Check this thing out. This is a cast iron pan with a tire built into it. Okay? This thing is insane. Look at this. It's a pan. It's a tire. It's a tire pan. Tire pan. <laughs>